Hi everyone. Welcome to another video by Chinta. I am Rajdeep and in today's video from with a break from the routine we'll look at a very recent problem from this year's TIFR GS exam. Technically it is an exam meant for undergraduates but the tools that this problem will employ are generally quite simple. It's a problem that essentially asks to evaluate the nature of what's called an isometry what is an isometry it is simply a distance preserving map i'll get a little bit more into detail but the what i want you to know before you get into the problem is that don't get afraid of the terminology the terminology is only just to clarify what is going on but the actual content of the problem is very simple and very interesting It's very, it's an inherently curiosity based problem. It's something you would ask yourselves if you were just looking at the definition of an isometry. So with that, let's get into it. So this problem is from the TIFR GS 2025 math exam. This is a very new problem. It's less than two, less than a month old at least, but about about two weeks old. So it's a it's a fresh problem. So let's look at what it says. Let s square is equal to x y z triples in the in R cube, which is just space, just three dimensional space, such that x square plus y square plus z square is equal to one. This is nothing to be scared about. We'll we'll get into it quickly. And let d from s square cross s square to R be the restriction of the Euclidean metric again. nothing to be scared about i'll explain what this means it's very easy if f from s square to s square is a map such that the distance of f of x and f of y is the same as the distance of x and y for all x y on s2 then f is reject what kind of a question is this this is a true false question in the exam you were either supposed to mark true or false now one thing i would like to say at this point is that true false questions in the tifr gs exam are very gambly if you don't know what you're doing in that if you're trying to guess it's a bad deal because it's a plus 2 minus 2 system so if you got it if you get it right you have a plus 2 but if you get it wrong it's a minus 2 so really unless you're sure what of what you're doing it's not worth guessing but let's unpack what is s2 s2 is nothing but the unit sphere it's just the spherical shell around the orbit so this is three dimensional space s2 is nothing but the unit sphere well a better way would be to think of it like this but that would unnecessarily mess up the diagram but yeah we're just looking at the sphere the sphere the surface of the sphere so you have the surface of the sphere and you have d which is really it's just a stand in for distance i don't want to get into what a metric space is or what the what a metric is but it's exactly what it sounds like metric just means distance it's a measure of the distance of two points and the euclidean metric is just a standard distance that you know which is just the point the distance between x1 y1 and z1 and x2 y2 and z2 two points is just the standard one defined by the pythagoras theorem x1 minus x2 square y1 minus y2 square and z1 minus z2 square the square root of that entire thing standard nothing weird w- what does the restriction part mean it just means that you don't define any new weird distance function on the unit sphere you just work with the one that you already have this is actually a, a, an important distinction because there's a more natural distance that you can define on the unit sphere which is by great circles you know if you had a point here and you had a point here a a, dis- a distance a possible distance metric a metric or a distance would be along this great circle the the length of this arc but we don't do any of that fancy stuff we just say inside the the sphere if i choose a dist- different point this is the great circle but all you don't you don't do that you simply join it to this the two points with the straight line and ask what is the length of the straight line that's what it's saying and as far as what an or the word isometry that i used 
it is characterized by this condition isometry means is just iso plus metry metry as you may imagine it regards distances iso means the same a function from a space to another is well from a function from a space to itself is a map which preserves distances if two points were at a distance 2 wherever you send them they also need to have a distance of 2 is it true that all such functions are surjective that's what the question says how do we go about solving this at this point i would like for you to pause the video and try it on your own once you get past the notation it's actually a very simple problem it doesn't use any fancy mathematics it's very simple so pause the video and try it for yourself So hopefully you've tried it by now and as usual you've developed some appreciation for the problem. It's a very interesting statement. Is it true that isometries are surjective? Well, isometries are a very tight condition. So this is how I like to think about it is that any point on this field is determined by all of its distances from other points. Think about it. On the number line, if I just I mean not a number line, but like just on a line any if if i just fix one point and i call it x if i say tell me find me the point which has a, which is at a distance 5 from x that already narrows it down to two points right it it's either going to be this point or this point which is at a distance 5 now if i throw in another point and i call it y and say tell me the point which is at, which is at a distance 5 from x and say 10 from y such a point might not exist but if it does it's obviously going to be unique right so two points alone with their distance data determine every point on the real number line on the on a, on a line uniquely on a sphere maybe it's a bit you need more points but a burden isometry is not saying you preserve distance from preserve distances from one point or two point or five points you preserve distances from every point so it's kind of like saying that a point if i think of a point as a unique solution to all of the distance equations it satisfies that from point a it has distance 5 from point b it has distance 10 and so on it's satisfying all of these equations the isometry condition implies that you can't lose this point because it's a unique solution if there if there was one other point maybe it would work but there's a unique solution to all of the distance equations so you must have that data being preserved that is the center of this problem Now how do we prove it concretely? Simple. Fix a point A. So you take the sphere. Take the sphere. And fix some point A. Right? Say it goes to some point B. On a sphere you can't really tell two points apart. So it doesn't really matter. But say it does. So say after you map everything via F, you still have a a sphere obviously you're mapping the sphere to itself but say a goes to some point b the point is to notice that the set of points at a given fixed distance from a or b or any real point really then once you fix the distance you get these circles on the sphere these represent the distance the distances from a so if i say what are all the points on this sphere Which are which are at a distance one from A. That would just be one circle, right? So, from A, it would just be a circle that looks like this, right? If I say five, what are all the points at a distance five? It would be a different circle, and so on, right? The point is that say some point, uh, say the say surjectivity is not true. That this is not a surjective map. So some point is missed. That say some point c does not occur as the image of any other point i'll show that this is impossible how look at all the points which are at the same distance from a or b if doesn't really matter as c you get a circle right so you get the circle on the sphere the point is that An isometry is an isometry, no matter where you're looking. If I restrict to two points, the distance between those two points is preserved. If I restrict myself to five points, the same. The point is that since it's an isometry, 
a point on this red circle can only map to another point on this red circle because you need to preserve distances from A, right? So this is the cool part. Starting from spheres, we have now descended to circles. Every point on this circle, on this circle, must map to another point on this circle. So now you have some circle. So say the circle corresponding to C, wherever, you know, uh, the, the so say the distance between B and C is 5, doesn't matter, X. Just look at the circle on on this pre-image sphere of distance that. So if this distance was, was D, just look at the circle of which has, which is at a distance D from A. This is a circle. And now I just focus on this circle. So now I have a circle and I have an, which maps to another circle. And I know that C is somewhere over here. C is not achieved apparently under this map, but we'll see that that cannot happen. So now you have circles. The point is that the same argument will hold. Say you have to, now you fix some other point on the circle. Call it P. It goes to some other point. Say Q. Again, on a circle, you don't really care about uh, choosing a, 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 a single point. All points are indistinguishable. But say. The, po the point is that there's only two points from which are, which are the same distance from P as, this, as the distance from Q and C. So say the distance between Q and C is 4. If I look at the two points, which are only two points, which are a distance 4, there will be C and some other point C prime. So C prime and C can only go, to, so say the distance between P and C prime and C, this is, this is some distance D, right? Since you have to preserve this distance, C prime and C both need to go to one of each other. Like that's, that's the restriction, that they can't go anywhere else. Either C prime goes to itself or to C. Either C goes to itself or to C prime. C is missed. That means both C prime and C have to map to the same point, to C prime. Can that happen? Absolutely not. Why? Because that breaks the condition that the distance between C and C prime is fixed. Right? The distance between C and C prime is something non-zero. They're distant points. Say five. You had two points that were, you know, part apart, which have now mapped to the same point. So that... So now their distance condition is broken. In particular, it's very easy to see that isometries, distance preserving maps are injective. Two points, distinct points, can't map to the same point because their distance is now suddenly zero, can't have. So isometries are obviously injective and now it has proven for us that they're surjective as well, right? C cannot be missed because C and C prime can't both map to the same point. Hence, C cannot be missed. So we've proven that not only isometries are subjective, they're also injective and hence they're bijective. So we've proven that all isometries on S2, of course, on the unit sphere are bijective. That's a really cool result if you stop and think about it. That you can't sort of move points on a sphere keeping distances fixed without making the map bijective. That's a restriction you're put on. So on a plane, for example, uh, the same thing can be, it's the, almost the same argument will hold. You choose some point where the origin goes, blah, blah. So you're seeing the same thing, you get circles, and circles will have to map to themselves, and the same argument will hold. So, so on the plane, the same result is true, that isometries are going to be bijective. In fact, you can even classify all of the isometries. It's a, it's a hard-ish problem. You could try it on your own. Find all the isometries on the plane. What you'll see is that it'll fall into one of four categories. It's either a translation, right, where every point moves by some amount, the same fixed amount. It's a rotation, it's a reflection, or it's a glide reflection. Those are all the four possibilities. Uh, I urge you to look up what those are, but yeah. Uh, so you can even classify all the isometries on the plane. Why don't you try classifying all the isometries on the sphere? Can't be too hard. Uh, yeah, that's what I want to leave you with. I think this is a very interesting problem. I enjoyed solving this problem during the test. I took the test myself a few weeks ago. Yeah, and it's a great problem. And I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.